If you're standing under this... That's a big whale. Look at that whale. You may not realize you're looking at art. When you actually see it in real life, you're like, whoa, that is not what I saw in the book. And that's the art of Terry Chase. We did it in seven pieces, but this is 50 foot long. In fact, it's so large you can walk on the inside of this thing without even ducking your head. This whale of a diorama took two weeks to install in the Ocean Hall of the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. When you go under it, it looks like it's going to just plop onto you and you're going to be stuck. It was spawned a thousand miles away at Chase Studios in Cedar Creek, Missouri. This is a, actually a living whale that we reconstructed called Phoenix. But how did you copy Phoenix? She couldn't hold still for you to make a mold. Phoenix has been photographed over and over again from all angles. And we had to copy every little detail. You can imagine that the Smithsonian is, is very picky about every little detail. Chase's eye for detail comes from training both as a scientist and an artist. He opened his studio here in the Ozarks in 1973. Wow. This is our mural area. He's created a kind of Willy Wonka-like factory of nature. I always advertise that Chase Studio is a, is a magical place. We have collections of everything. I can At the studio, he's amassed one of the largest private collections of natural history artifacts on Earth. We have all kinds of uh, preserved samples. Now watch what happens when you put the black light on them. It all began for him as a child. I used to build these safaris, and I'd take all the neighborhood kids through for, you know, five cents, and we'd build these giraffes out of paper mache, and we'd build all these sets. I'm suddenly realizing, you know, God, I'm doing the same thing today that I did when I was in the grade school. You might say Chase's art makes him the most viewed artist in the country, if not the world. His work is displayed in hundreds of museums and institutions across the globe. But these aren't your mother's dioramas. They've actually done studies, watched people's reactions, and they've timed the amount of time that they spend in front of each one of these dioramas. It's about three and a half seconds. To keep up with shrinking attention spans, the studio team makes dioramas amazingly lifelike. Though here, all is not always what it seems. All the little spines are made out of wires. Wood is welded out of steel. You won't be able to tell where the real thing ends and the painting begins. Light is painted on canvas. These are the actual fiberglass unpainted pieces. And turtle shells are molded out of plastic. These dioramas are dynamic, interactive, and almost always larger than life. Take this crayfish and we've blown it up. Actually, it's enlarged about 12 times. We're putting these brighter colors on so that when we put those washes on, some of these brighter colors will shine through and give it that kind of luminosity that makes it look real. Why is it so important to you to get those I details that no it's, one else would think about? Right? It's just, uh, it's, it's a challenge for one, but it's part of my passion to make everything as perfect as I can absolutely make it. Plants, birds, mars, In his 40 like years animals. at work making museum exhibits, Terry Chase has developed an astonishing attention to detail. His work even captures nature's imperfections. There was a tear in the lip that, where she'd caught, caught in a fishing net. Well, we had to reproduce that same scar that's on her lip. How do you feel about millions of Americans and people all over the world stand underneath something you created and are, are awed by it? I just hope it doesn't fall on them. 